Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Pytholic and without wasting any more time, let's begin. And this session is going to be divided into multiple parts because we are going to cover a lot of concepts related to IAM. Watch out for multiple parts on this and don't miss out on any of the videos. First, we will talk about the introduction to IAM. Then we will talk about what is access control. We will also explore the principle of least privilege, IAM users and IAM user groups. We will also discuss in depth about IAM role and policy and permissions. We will also talk about access management and moving on, we'll also cover ABAC and its differences with RBAC and how this is incorporated into IAM. Next, we will also talk about access analyzer and how it is such an important part of the feature set of IAM. The most important part for you, the hands-on demo for AWS IAM feature sets because we are going to do thorough analysis on IAM. I hope you're excited. Let's begin. I hope you have your coffees ready and let's start off with AWS IAM. And let's understand how it all began. This is your introduction to AWS IAM. When we think of AWS IAM, and if you are new to IAM or identity and access management, let me first confuse you by making use of terms that will make you think twice about the importance of the core concepts rather than just listening to the jargon words. First, IAM helps you to provide fine-grained access control across all of the AWS. So in simple words, it means that you can carefully devise access to the smallest of components with precision. Next, you can manage access to your workforce and systems to ensure least privilege permissions. The least privilege is basically giving only that access to a resource so that it can perform the required operation. Let's suppose I just want a user to have single read-only permission to a particular resource. So I can do that. That is its least privilege. That brings us to the next point, which is it can provide us the flexibility of who can access which services and resources under and under which conditions. Last but not the least, IAM is a feature of your AWS account and is offered at no additional charges. Yes. IAM is a service that is provided by AWS for you to manage your access and permissions at no additional cost. Oh well, John is right here with us. Imagine this as you or imagine this is you. And this is the AWS environment. As you can see here, we have the AWS services and resources. And what are you then? Yes, you are the user who is going to make use of the AWS services and resources. And in order to do that, you need to first make yourself a part of your AWS environment. So for that reason, we create the AWS user. And in other words, or in other words, you create an IAM user who can access the resources you want. But not only you who is going to be using this, isn't it? There will be a group or pool of users who will also want to access the AWS services and resources. And that will be the user group. And that as well will be using AWS IAM. So what did we understand here? If you need to use the AWS resources and services that are a part of your AWS environment, you need to have access to them. And who can help you? Yes, that's AWS IAM. Try and understand this situation. You could be the customer. You could be a developer or from the dev team. You could be from the testing team. You could be well, from another team, uh, another business unit, you could also be an architect who needs more access privileges than a normal user. Or as well, you could be from the security team who has to keep track of all the AWS accounts. And John here wants all of these users, user groups and accounts to be able to access the services in some or other way based on the use case. And how does he do that? Or how will he be able to do that? Yes by using AWS Identity and Access Management. But provisioning access and managing the permissions of who can access what and how much permission they should be provided to complete their task is not as simple. So make sure you pay attention to the details we are going to discuss now. If we need to make use of the AWS resources, AWS is going to let you use its services only if you have permission to execute the operations that you want. You should need to have the permissions to execute the operation that you want and if you do have the permissions AWS is going to let you use them 
and how are we going to do that yes you being the owner will create the aws account which in turn gives you the root access or aws root account access in the last video i have already explained you how you can create the aws account and create your im user and assign permissions to them if you haven't watched that please watch it again the first thing that you need to do is you need to create the aws account straightforward for your users you need to create the im user and im user group to have multiple users in the same or different group we can create im user groups as well you need to create im roles to assume the role to perform operations on the resources and for other users to be able to make use of the services that you have on your aws account and you need to create or make use of the im policies to define the permission levels on what level of operations you can perform on a particular resource so this is the whole gist of making use of iam but john is still not clear on how effectively we can do this so let's move ahead and focus on the details what aws iam tells us is that with aws identity and access management you can apply fine grained permissions to aws services and resources but you need to ask yourself that who and on what are you going to apply these fine grained permissions the who is going to be the workforce users with aws sso that is single sign on or it could be the workloads with im role you are a user if you want to create an ec2 instance you need to have access to the aws account if you are a user on iam you can log in using your credentials or by using single sign on federated login and if you have the permissions to create ec2 instance you can surely go ahead and create it let's suppose if you are hosting an application on ec2 and it needs access to an s3 bucket so that it can store files on the bucket then you can create a im role that has the permissions to write on the aws s3 bucket that you have and attach the im role to your ec2 instance so it could be the workforce or the workload with im role and that's where we define the policies that is can access part which provides permissions that are defined in your im policies and on what yes the what part is your resources within your aws organization and aws has a very important line mentioned on the document which says with iam you define who can access what by specifying fine grain permissions iam then enforces those permissions for every request one of the basic ideas of iam is access that you have is denied by default and access is granted only when permission specify an allow statement so you will define a permission in the policy and aws is going to enforce them aws is not going to object you on anything remember that it's not going to tell you what you can do and cannot do it's you who is going to define them and let aws enforce them so if anyone asks you about aws iam remember these words who can access what but you might be feeling have i heard this concept before yes you have and you're right you might have heard of the triple a concept that is authentication authorization and accounting keep that phrase in mind and let's move on but in order to understand how this works we need to dig deeper so let's talk about what is access control here i am going to give you an example and you will tell me what is the meaning of access control make sure that you write it down in the comment section below now imagine this is our office this looks very empty right now but let us fill this now this is your work area this is the breakout area where we have a lot of fun these are our meeting rooms where we waste a lot of time <laughs> sorry we discuss very important things and this is our ceo's cabin and we also have a server room i hope you like the office now let's bring up the wonderful team here we have four members the ceo the dev team the server team and if you see every member on the team rightly called the employees have an id card with them which allows them to enter the office like you will be having a id card when you actually go to the office you have biometrics similarly these people or the team members that we have here also have a id card notice that each door that you see here is color coded so if you see here we have uh, yellow yellow for all the common areas we have red for the server room and we have green for the ceo's cabin watch this it is very interesting when the office starts we can see each employee 
has access to his or her respective work area and all of the team members have access to the work area, breakout area and the meeting rooms because they will be using it. Next, the CEO is the only person who has access to the CEO's cabin. So if you can see here, we have the green color door and the green color code matching for the CEO. Next, the CEO and the server team have access to the server room. Now just take your time and try to understand why did we do this. We all know that every person has a certain job or responsibility and they have to fulfill a certain role in the organization. A developer has no access to the CEO's cabin, not just because it doesn't have any work there, but also as a security measure. A similar thing goes with the server room. We are just restricting access by adding a particular condition here. And I hope you're understanding what I mean when we are trying to just put restriction based on a particular condition. So now tell me, what is access control? As rightly being pointed out here, access control is a selective restriction of access to a place or other resources. Understand this carefully. Access control is a selective restriction of access. For now, you need to think of how you can provide access control to the resources you have. And that's the same reason why we have separation of duties and separation of business units. I have explained this in the AWS organization principle session as well. So if you haven't seen that, please watch it again. In real time scenarios in the same organization, we have multiple AWS accounts for each team or pillar. If you see here, we have an account for development team. We have one for security. And the last one that we have is for production. And based on that, if you see, we have to make sure that the developers and testers should have access to the development account and we should restrict access for them to the production account or the production environment. Next, the security team has access to all the accounts so that it can monitor the resources and apply certain organizational policies. And next one is that we have the senior engineering team who has access to both the development account and the production account. That is why when you think just about yourself, it seems to be very simple. But when you think of managing more than 100 accounts and how they are being governed in a single organization, that changes the whole outlook of how we are going to manage it. You need to understand that IAM can provide you with the features by which you can manage access for users who have a specific role and responsibility. But here you may ask me that if AWS IAM is sufficient to manage all the AWS accounts in the organization, and I would say no, we still have services like AWS organization that can help us manage multiple accounts under the roof, but the underlying permissions are still managed by IAM. And that is why we must understand what AWS is trying to tell us. Each IAM user is associated with one and only one AWS account. And why this is an important statement is because let's suppose you are a part of the development team and your organization has a AWS account called development account. Similarly, there might be 10 to 15 other teams who have a development team and they might also make use of a separate dev account. The same reason when you create a user in an account, you don't necessarily create the same user across all the development accounts. Instead, the same user can assume role and access resources from other accounts. Yes, by using STS or what we also call as a temporary session or a token based login. Secondly, an IAM user is a resource in IAM that has associated credentials and permissions. An IAM user can represent a person or an application that uses its credential to make AWS request. Remember this. And if you are a user, then you can log into your AWS account using your SSO or STS or even by using your credentials to perform the operation. But what if you're working on a deployment where you have to perform operations on other accounts? You don't need to log into each and every instance across all the AWS accounts and then perform the operation. That would be tedious, isn't it? So we can create roles, assume the role and with enough permission, we can perform the operations we want. So you need to understand that you are an entity or resource when it comes to IAM. And that is why AWS decides who can access what, but based on what permissions and policies are being set. And that is why it is very important for you to remember and feed this in your mind about AWS IAM, that is who can access what. The who is going to be the workforce user with AWS SSO that is single sign on and the workloads with IAM. That's where you define the policies that is can access part, which provides permissions that are defined in your IAM policies. 
and what yes the what part is your resources within your aws organization here if you see it's not mentioned aws account but it has rightly been mentioned it's aws organization and that is why a lot of people get confused between aws account and aws organization where aws organization is an account management service that lets you consolidate multiple aws accounts into an organization that you create and centrally manage them with organizations you can create member accounts and invite existing accounts to join your organization but here i will not confuse you by talking about aws organizations don't worry we will discuss aws organizations in the upcoming session and thanks everyone for joining in for today's session of aws i hope you got some of the information that you wanted and if you haven't subscribed already then please do so please comment and like the video and uh, that really helps me a lot and helps the channel grow and is a really motivating factor for me so please make sure that you subscribe it really takes a lot of work and a lot of hard work to actually bring in these videos so please make sure that you support the channel by subscribing and liking the video so i'll meet you in the next session of aws stay safe stay healthy it's pytholic signing off